In this tutorial, we'll learn how to easily add these beautiful page transitions to your React project using Framer Motion. We'll start with the basic React Router application, and along the way, we'll learn how to add text transitions, object animations, and other cool transitions like this slide and circle animation. So we have VS Code open over here and by starting off with a very basic React Router application. So as you can see, we can go between the pages and we don't have any animations right now. So in our main.jsx, we just have a browser router wrapping our entire app. And then inside app.jsx, we have a navbar and a few routes. So we have the home page, products, about and contact. And if we go into the pages folder, we can take a look at the different files. So in home.jsx, we just have a, a custom title component and a custom body component. In the products file, we have the title again. And then we have a few products, which are these cards over here with images and descriptions and titles. In the about page, again, we just have a title and a body. And then in the contact section, again, it's the same where it's a title and a body. If we take a look at the, at the title and body components, we see that the title uh, component is just an H1 wrapped with a div and for body as well. We can see it's just a p tag wrapped with a div. The product is a div with an image, h2 and a p. And then the navbar is uh, basically a nav item with a few list items with the links pointing to different pages. And if you want this starter code without any of the framer motion stuff in it, you can go to the GitHub uh, repo linked in the comments down below or in the description. And you can go to the before branch and download the files from there. Now we can see that if we go between the pages, there aren't any transitions right now. And to do that, we need to use a library called framer motion. So we'll go into the terminal over here and stop the server. And we'll say npm install framer dash motion. Once that's done, we can run npm run dev. And to ensure that animations work throughout our entire project, we need to go inside app.jsx and at the top import something called animate presence from Framer Motion. And what we need to do is wrap all of our routes with the animate presence tag. So we'll go before the routes tag and write down animate presence and then just wrap the entire thing. Now to trigger any animation in Framer Motion whenever the pages change, the direct child of animate presence needs to have a unique key which updates whenever the animation has to be triggered. So the best way we can do that when going between the different pages is using the path mentioned over here in the URL. So when we go from about to products, the path over here changes and then the key inside our app will change and that will trigger an animation. And to do that, we can use the use location hook. So we'll go to the top and write down const location is equal to use location, which we will get from React Router DOM. And then inside this routes tag over here, we do two things. Firstly, we say the location is equal to the location variable we got. And then the key is equal to location dot path name. And that's about it for the setup. And we can begin with adding some animations. One last thing we need to do is add an attribute to animate presence called mode and set it to wait. This just ensures that the first animation finishes before the next one starts. So the first animation we'll work on is the title over here. So if you remember in the demo, when we switch between pages, this title disappears and then it reappears again from the bottom when we go to the new page. So to do that, we'll go inside the components folder and inside the title.jsx file, we'll add our animation. So whenever you want a certain component to change whenever it appears and disappears, you need to go to that specific component and say import motion from framer dash motion. And in this given example, we want this h1 tag to change its position whenever we move to a new page. All we have to do is write down motion.h1 for both the opening and closing tags. And this ensures that whenever we change pages and this component appears, it is animated. Now, nothing will happen right now because we haven't told Frame of Motion what we want to animate. So for every single animatable object, we have three main properties which we can define. Firstly is the initial value, then is the animate value, and then is the exit value. And each of these take in an object. So we'll set empty objects for now. Now the initial value is any CSS styling applied to the stack before the page has loaded. The animate value is any styling applied when the page is finally completed loading and the viewer is, is looking at the page. And then exit is any styling applied to the page after it has been removed from the view. So in our case, we want the title to initially be with a Y of 100%. When we animate it, which means when the viewer is looking at the page, we want the Y value to be equal to zero. So at the center of wherever it is. And then once we leave the page and the page is being removed from the view, we want the y value to be equal to 
minus 100%. And we'll save that. And now if we go between the pages, we see that the home value goes up and then the products value comes from the bottom and goes to the middle. So initially it's at 100% at the bottom. When we are on the page, it's at zero. And then when we leave, it goes to minus 100% at the top. Of course, we want it to not be visible once, it above, once it's above a certain value. And to fix that, all we need to do is go into title.css and in the container, we say overflow hidden. And just as simple as that, we have the title animation working. Now there's another field which you can define along with these, which is called the transition property. And these are basically settings for your animations. So what you can do is you can define the duration of your animation, which is how long it'll take to animate between two states. And then you can also add a delay. So whenever the page loads, it'll run this animation after a delay of the specified seconds. So you can see the title already taking a delay, it's equal to zero. So we'll just assign it over here and then later on we can see how the delay works. But if we save that and we go between the multiple pages, you'll see that the title moves in a lot slower now since the duration is 0.5 seconds. Now as an exercise, I want you to do the same thing with the body element over here. The only difference is instead of going from top to bottom, it'll come from the right hand side and move towards the left. And when you're exiting the page, it'll go towards the left again. So it'll be this area over here and you need to animate it. So once you're done with that, come back here for the answer. So as we know, the first thing we need to do is import motion from framer dash motion. And then whichever field we want to animate, we add a motion value to it. So we say motion dot P. And then over here as well, we, we say motion.p. And then we need to specify mainly three properties. So initial. For initial, we want it to start with an X of 100%. Then we have animate, which is the value when you're viewing the page. And of course, when it's that, we want the X to be zero. And then we have exit. And in that condition, we want X to be minus 100%. And we save that. And also we will set the transition property. So we want it to have a duration of 0.5 seconds like the title and we'll also uh, given the delay property which we're importing. So now we can see if we go between multiple pages, both the title and the body are animated. By the way, if you're liking this video and you learned something new, please consider subscribing and do join the Discord server link down below in the comments and the description. If you want to give suggestions for videos, get feedback on your projects or meet other developers like yourself. Now we'll take a look at a component which is slightly more advanced, which is the product card in the products page. So we want to animate the outside div. So we'll say import motion from framer dash motion. And then we'll replace the two divs with motion dot div and save that. So for initial, we want the Y to be 10 pixels and the opacity to be zero. And then for animate, we want the Y to be zero and opacity to be one. And then let's add the transition property over here as well. So we want the duration to be 0.75 seconds. And then if you work with animations before, you'll know a property called ease. So we can specify that over here as well. And we can say ease in out. And then obviously we're taking in a delay property so we can put in delay over here as well. Now, if we go to home and come back into products, we can see that it's slightly animated like that. Now let's try adding the exit property over here. We want the Y to be 50% when we're exiting. We want the opacity to go to zero. Now, when we try to go to the home page, we'll see that the animation is slightly slow and we want to increase the speed. But we see that we've already defined a transition property which applies to the animations. And if we change the value of duration here, it'll change every single animation. But the great thing is that each uh, property such as initial, animate and exit has its own transition property. So you can specify the transition for the exit uh, value without changing the transition value for the other fields. So inside exit, we can specify transition and we can say that the duration is 0.25. Ease is still ease in out and then the delay as well. And then now if you go into products and we go back into home, we see that the exit animation is a lot faster. So you can either specify global transition properties or stage specific transition properties. This is also a good time to see the delay property in action. So what we want is we want the laptop card to come in first and then the shoes card slightly delayed and then the puppy card delayed even more. 
and we see that we're already applying a delay prop over here into all of our transitions. So if we go into pages and we go into products.jsx, we can apply some delay values over here. So we want the second product to be delayed by 0.2 seconds and we, and we want the last product to be delayed by 0.4 seconds. And this will delay the animation for this particular element these many seconds after the page is done loading in. So if we save that, we see that the exit animation is already delayed and we see that the entering animation is also delayed adequately based on the prop we set over here. Next, we look at a cool animation on our contact page where when we load the page, we want a black screen and then it slides up to reveal this page. To do that, we'll go inside the contact page and to the bottom, we'll add a div with a self-closing tag. And of course, since it'll be animated, it'll be motion.div. And this will represent the huge black screen which will be rendered initially and which will go up when the page has to be revealed. So we'll give it a class name of slide. We'll give it an initial value of Y and set that to minus 100%. And before we add the animate value, we'll go inside styles.css and this is being applied to every single page. And we'll say dot slide. We want the position to be fixed. It'll be zero from the top, zero from the left. Width will be 100%. Height will be 100 viewport height and background color. We'll set that to hash 0f, 0f, 0f. Back in contact.jsx, we'll set the animate value, which is when the page renders, to be equal to y is equal to 100%. And we'll go to the top and also import motion. So import motion from Primo Motion. And if you go into about and back into contact, we see that the black screen does go from the top to the bottom, but it's a bit too fast. So we'll specify a transition property. So we'll say transi transition is equal to duration of two seconds. And then we saw previously that the ease value of ease in out, ease in and ease out could be applied, but we can also specify Bezier curves. So we can say ease and then pass in an array of numbers. So we'll say 0 0.2, 1, 0 0.2 and 1. And this specifies a Bezier curve for the easing in. So we'll save that, go into about. And if we come back in, it's a lot slower and it's got a nice ease to the animation. Another cool animation we have on this page is the exit animation where a circle starts from the center and slowly increases in size and then it goes on to the next page. So for that, we'll create another motion div. So we'll say motion.diff and close that. We'll give it a class name of circle and save that. In styles.css, we'll write down dot circle position absolute top 50% left 50% transform translate minus 50% on both the X and Y axis. And then background color, we'll set it as the same color as the page. So hash FFCF81 and save that. Back inside contact.jsx. Over here, we don't have to specify an initial value because we don't want any animation for the circle when we're entering the page, only when we're exiting. So we'll specify animate and we'll say that the width should be zero, height should be zero, and the border radius should be 100%. And then once we exit, set the width to 100%, height to 100% and the border radius to zero. And then let's just add the transition property as well. So we'll give it duration of 0 0.5 and an ease of ease in out and save that. Now, if we exit the page, we see that a circle appears. It grows in size and it goes to the other page. So let's take a look again. We have the slide in animation and the circle increases in size and we go to the next page. So those are the basics of page transitions in your React project using Frame of Motion. You learned how to add text animations by working on the title and the body. You learned uh, different aspects like delaying and easing in and out. And you also made some cool animations on the contact page such as the slide in and the circle out. If you learned something new, do like the video and share it. And consider subscribing and joining the Discord server down below again if you want to meet other developers like yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching.